Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I'm very excited to be bringing you a review of the Ryzen 5 3600 and 3600X CPUs from AMD. These are new CPUs released in July 2019 based on the Zen 2 architecture and the 7 nanometer manufacturing process. These are essentially the most advanced consumer CPUs in the world, along with the 3700, 3800, and 3900 series from AMD. But these are probably most important to AMD because they are the value leaders in the new Zen 2 lineup. The Ryzen 5 3600 comes in at $200 and the 3600X comes in at $250. Now these are both 6 core 12 thread processors. They use simultaneous multi-threading technology which is similar to Intel's hyper-threading technology to, pr to produce 6 additional virtual cores. Now I tested these CPUs in a variety of configurations to give you an idea of what their strengths and weaknesses are and where they'll perform the best. I use two different motherboards, the Crosshair 7 Hero from Asus and the B450i Aorus from Gigabyte. Now these are both 2018 models, so the B450 and X470 chipsets respectively predate these CPUs. So it's very important to note that I actually had to flash these two motherboards with a new firmware using an older CPU. That was the Ryzen 7 2700X that I had on hand. That is going to be something I'll return to later in this review, the issue of motherboard compatibility. Keep in mind that AMD is actually offering consumers a lot of built-in value by maintaining the AM4 socket compatibility. That AM4 socket was released in 2017 with the original Ryzen 1000 series CPUs. These CPUs are now two generations later and use the same socket, and AMD has promised that at least two additional generations of CPUs will be released using this socket. If we look at Intel in comparison, the company never maintains socket compatibility for more than two generations of CPUs. Now, in terms of the systems I used to test these, I, of course, needed an ITX system for my smaller motherboard and an ATX system for my larger motherboard. The smaller system is based on the Silverstone SG13 chassis. I used the stock coolers for these AMD processors, both of which fit in this modified system. I also use the GTX 1080 GPU for all of my game benchmarking tests. As for the ATX system, I have a Silverstone PS14e case. And most importantly in this system, I was able to fit a 240 millimeter liquid cooler from Corsair. So in my 3600X testing, I did actually use this cooler in addition to the stock cooler to show you what you get when you strap on a much more powerful cooler. Of course, benchmarks in a vacuum aren't of much value, so I did compare these CPUs to a number of other CPUs I have in my benchmarking suite. That includes the 3200G and 3400G, which I recently posted a review on. It also includes the 2700X, which I actually had to use to flash these motherboards. So I had it on hand, I went ahead and ran the same benchmarks on that CPU. And then I have two CPUs from Intel. These include the original Skylake CPU, the Core i7-6700K, released in 2015. This is a four-core, eight-thread CPU. And I've got the latest Skylake CPU. It's not called Skylake anymore, but it uses the same architecture. This, of course, is the Core i9-9900K from Intel. It's an eight-core, 16-thread CPU, and it comes in at $500. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have a six-core Intel CPU to compare against these six-core CPUs, but there really isn't a current Intel CPU that is a, is a really good comparison. That's because the 8700K, which is the closest analog to these, it's a 6-core, 12-thread CPU, isn't really a current CPU, although you can still buy it. Now, when you see the results of these two CPUs, you'll be able to extrapolate how an 8700K would perform. Keep in mind that that processor still costs about $340, so quite a bit more than either of these. So without further ado, let's get into the benchmarks to see how these CPUs perform. So I did get to run a number of benchmarks on these CPUs. Uh, you can see all of the benchmarks linked down below in my written review. I'm going to pull a few highlights out of that review just to show you here in the video review. Uh, I'm going to start with 3D Mark Firestrike, the physics score. This is a computationally heavy benchmark. It rewards simultaneous multi-threading and hyper-threading. In the past, I've found that it rewards Intel's technology by about 50%. So a 
6700K, for instance, would be about 50% faster than a 6600K that didn't have hyperthreading. Well, as you can see, hyperthreading is working well for Intel here, but it's working, or simultaneous multi-threading is working just as well for AMD. The 3600 and 3600X are 50% faster than Skylake on a per core basis. So finally, after many years, AMD has caught up to Intel. Remember that the 9900K is still based on the Skylake architecture. So the only reason it's faster here is because it's clocked a bit higher and it has eight cores. Another thing that's really interesting to see here is how the 3600 series matches the Ryzen 7 2700X and its eight Zen Plus cores. This is a triumph for AMD and a boon to consumers. That Ryzen 5 3600 is a $200 CPU. The Ryzen 7 2700X debuted at $330. It's now down to $250, but I'm hard pressed to recommend that when the Ryzen 5s work so well on this new Zen 2 architecture. Moving on to Cinebench R15, we see that the Ryzen 5s can't quite keep up with the 8 core 2700X, but they are still way, way ahead of the Core i7 6700K and its four cores. In fact, these CPUs are nearly twice as fast, which is quite impressive. Cinebench is actually a very favorable benchmark for AMD. It's one that AMD likes to use itself often. Um, of course, the 9900K is ahead here. It does have eight cores. It does run a bit faster, but uh, no shame here for AMD with its Ryzen 5 3600 series. Next up, we have Geekbench. This is an all-around benchmark of office tasks, productivity. And again, the Ryzen 5 3600 series matches the 2700X, which is just incredible. Again, a testament to the strength of that Zen 2 architecture. Uh, way, way ahead of the 6700K, which was originally a $350 processor, and behind the 9900K, but really falling right in the middle. Again, showing that AMD has nothing to fear here in terms of the Skylake architecture. Uh, AMD it has matched Intel on a per-core basis. Now I'm going to show you a couple of game benchmarks. I'm going to start with one that is more or less video card limited, that is Doom. Uh, this is running the OpenGL uh, path uh, for the game engine. I have it on a GTX 1080. And what you see is that the 3600s actually run this game fantastically well. In fact, they run it better, I'd say, than the 9900K if you look at those minimums. They are also way ahead of the 2700X, as well as the other Zen Plus CPUs on this chart, the 3200G and 3400G which despite being part of the 3000 series are actually based on the older Zen Plus architecture. You can see that cores don't matter too much in this game. Um, ob obviously the 9900K is barely faster than the 6700K despite four additional cores. Clock speed matters and the core efficiency matters. And that's why we see Zen 2 actually taking the lead in Doom. Now let's move on to Dirt Rally. This is very much CPU limited. Uh, again, we see a triumph for the 3600 series, badly beating the 2700X, and for, for, uh, for the most part, pulling ahead of the 9900K, which is incredible. Now, I will point out that the 3600 did beat the 3600X here, and again, it's a sign that I'm just not sure that 3600X is consistently running faster than the 3600. And again, it calls into question its value in terms of the product stack for AMD. Finally, I'm going to go at, I'm going to show you Battlefield 5 multiplayer. Now, this is kind of a hard benchmark to run because it's in a live multiplayer match. So there is some game to game inconsistency in terms of the benchmarks. Uh, I did my best. And what you can see here is that this is probably not AMD's strength. Um, this is mostly GPU limited on my GTX 1080, but obviously the 9900K does pull ahead. It has that higher clock rate and it does have those two additional cores. It's not clear to me that the additional cores matter here. If you look at the 6700K, it's nearly as fast as the Ryzen 5 3600. And actually Ryzen's, uh, uh, the Ryzen 8 PUs don't do, do too poorly here. So it's really interesting to see how far ahead that 9900K went. Again, this is a multiplayer match. Maybe that was just 
an easier benchmark. Maybe there are a few fewer players uh, running around in that particular scene. So it's a little bit hard to get consistent, but there's no doubt about it. The Zen 2 architecture certainly is more consistent than the Zen Plus architecture. Notice the minimums on the 2700X. They are the lowest in this chart. Finally, in the interest of science, I ran these CPUs with a variety of coolers and also with several overclocked settings. Taking a look at the left side of this chart, you see the Ryzen 5 3600 performing at 3.9 gigahertz and hitting a benchmark of 3,967 points in CPU-Z. Simply strap on the larger Wraith Spire cooler and the CPU picks up another 30 megahertz. Looking at the 3600X, yes, it does have a higher all-core boost, and that increases further when we strap on that liquid cooler. An extra 50 megahertz simply by using a different cooler. I did not touch any of the settings. That is AMD's automated clocking system. That's not even overclocking, folks. That is just a precision boost that AMD uses. Now, how about precision boost overdrive? That is considered an auto overclocking function from AMD. When I engaged that, the 3600X with the Ray Spire was actually able to match the 3600X with a liquid cooler. And the combination of precision boost overdrive and a liquid cooler was able to get me to nearly 4.2 gigahertz. And of course, the highest speed in the benchmark. Now, my one concern about these results is that they don't vary all that much. And you might ask, well, what about manual overclocking? Well, in my tests, I could only hit 4.2 gigahertz and that required quite a high voltage. I don't think that would be worthwhile with these CPUs. I'd probably just go with a nice tower cooler in the $40 to $50 price range and use Precision Boost Overdrive, which is available within the Ryzen Master Software Suite available from AMD. I would not spend the extra money on a liquid cooler for these CPUs. They just don't have enough overhead. I also would not spend the extra money on the 3600X just to get its Wraith Spire cooler. That $50 is much better spent getting a nice cooler for the 3600 CPU. Well, AMD certainly has a winner with its new 3000 series. And these 3600 series processors are the value leaders in the lineup. The Ryzen 5 3600 was able to keep up with the Ryzen 7 2700X in a lot of my benchmarks, despite having two fewer cores. That's the power of the Zen 2 architecture. Now, between these two CPUs, I definitely have my favorite. It's the Ryzen 5 3600 comes in at just $200, and it offers performance that beats the 2700X in a lot of tests, and it also keeps pace with Intel's latest Skylake-based CPUs. As for the Ryzen 5 3600X, I just don't think it's worth the extra $50 it costs over the 3600. The cooler is larger, which in theory should allow it to perform better, but I found that in the test, it just couldn't distinguish itself from the 3600, and that Wraith Spire cooler is actually quite a bit louder than the Wraith Stealth cooler that the 3600 comes with, because it runs at a much higher RPM. So overall, I'm a huge fan of the new 3000 series, and this Ryzen 5 3600 is most definitely the value leader. In fact, except for those people who need extremely high-powered, multi-core CPUs for content creation, this is probably going to be the go-to processor for any of your tasks. It can game at the same level as Intel processors that cost quite a bit more, and it has multi-threaded performance that beats eight core CPUs and a lot of tests from previous generations. At only $200, it's a true bargain. But there's one fly in the ointment, and that is that to get out of the box compatibility with these CPUs, you actually need an X570 based motherboard. And those start at $170, nearly the same price as this CPU on its own. Now, like I said, I used existing uh, motherboards I had, the B415X470, but they needed a firmware update to boot these CPUs. They, of course, worked fine once I had that firmware applied, but if I hadn't had an older CPU on hand, I wouldn't have been able to flash those with the newer, newer firmware. My suggestion to AMD would be that when the next generation of Zen processors hits the market, it work with all of its motherboard partners to get motherboards in the channel ready for these CPUs before the CPUs even hit the market. It doesn't mean that you need a new chipset. All you need to do is take, say, a B54 motherboard, give it a new name that distinguishes it from previous motherboards. For instance, you might put 3000 or 4000 or Gen 3 or Gen 4 in the name so that a buyer of that motherboard knows this is compatible out of the box with my Gen 3 or Gen 4 processor or my 3000 series or 4000 series processor. 
Now, I do know that MSI is taking this initiative on its own with its new Max line of motherboards. I haven't seen these at retail, but the whole idea of those Max motherboards, the B450 and X470 Max, is that they have the latest firmware. There's no other real changes to those motherboards. I wish AMD had done that for this generation of CPUs because the 3600 is just a fantastic bargain at its $200 price point, but you do need either an old CPU to flash your old motherboard or a brand new, relatively expensive X570 based motherboard. Other than that, it's a huge winner. I actually give this five out of five stars. I feel that this is essentially a perfect product. As for the 3600X, I'm actually gonna give it three and a half out of five stars. I just don't think it is worth the extra cost or the extra noise that its cooler produces. If you want better performance, simply buy the Ryzen 5 3600, buy a 40 or $50 tower style 120 millimeter cooler, and you'll get better performance than you could get out of the 3600X and much lower noise levels. Remember that AMD's smart precision boost algorithm allows your CPU to take advantage of better coolers without you actually touching any settings. And if you go into Ryzen Master and use Precision Boost Overdrive, you can get even better performance out of your CPU without risking a thermal overload. So again, I'm really excited about this CPU release. This is something that enthusiasts have been waiting for for years. AMD has finally caught up to Intel on a per core basis and beaten it badly in terms of value. I can't wait to see what AMD does next. I assume that with its next iteration of the seven nanometer manufacturing node, it's gonna be able to clock the, these CPUs up even higher to catch up to the latest architecture from Intel and surpass it greatly in value because it is such a smaller lithography. Put another way, it's great to have competition again in the CPU market. If you like this review, please like and subscribe and I will catch you next time.